Hello! In today's lesson, we are going to look at the SUVAT equations. You might have come across this at IGCSE, but now we need to use them a lot at A-level. So, the SUVAT equations are really, really simple. Um, they can be used for anything that has a constant acceleration. Provided the acceleration of an object is constant, you can use any of these equations to describe the motion of that object. By the way, that can be zero acceleration. So we can use these equations for things that aren't accelerating. Uh, the only time that we can't use the SUVAT equations is when we're dealing with an object that has a changing acceleration. Other than that, all of these equations will describe how something moves. So they're called SUVAT because they use these five letters, S, U, V, A, and T. Um, they're a little bit um, different to what you may have used in the past. So when we're talking about SUVAT equations, we always use S for displacement from the origin. All of these equations, are, oh sorry, all of these terms are vectors. So this is distance with a direction. U is always used for the initial velocity of an object. V is always used for the final velocity of an object. A gives me the acceleration, which remember could be zero. And T is the time uh, for which the object is moving. A um, few little things that you can remember. Displacement, so that's why it's S. V is the final velocity, and what I tend to remember is that U comes before V in the alphabet, so that's why U is the first velocity, V is the final velocity, and A and T are quite simple. Um, for all of these, you must use these in SI base units, so it's got to be in metres, metres per second, metres per second squared, and seconds. Now, what this table shows you is that it is possible to create a whole bunch of equations that describe how objects move. So, for instance, the total displacement of an object um, can be found by taking the time that it was moving for, dividing the time it was moving for by 2, and then multiplying that by the sum of its initial velocity and its final velocity. What we're going to do in this session is just show you how each of these equations are constructed. Now, you could go ahead and just memorize this entire table, um, or you can memorize these ones um, in yellow, these ones that are highlighted. Um, what the, all of these other ones around here are just rearrangements by substituting one of these equations into the other. Um, I think that just memorising these things is quite difficult and also uh, error prone. Is it? You're thinking to yourself, is that a minus or a plus? Is it? Is it the t over two multiplied by u and then plus v? What do I do? So I'm going to show you how we actually derive all of these equations, and they all come from motion graphs. So here's the first one. Um, we can say that the velocity of an object is equal to its initial velocity plus its acceleration multiplied by time. And what you can do is you don't need to just memorize that equation. You could look at where it comes from. So if this is a velocity time graph. Then what I can say is this change in velocity is equal to the acceleration multiplied by its time because that's the definition of what um, acceleration is, or what final velocity is. And I can say, well, that's the change in velocity. If I already had some velocity, so let's say instead of this shape, um, I had a graph that looked like that. Well, this would be my initial velocity, this would be my final velocity. I can still say that my change in velocity is at, but I've added that on pom top, so it makes sense that my final velocity is my initial velocity plus at. So I can get this in a graphical fashion. Okay, let's take a look at this second equation. So I can say that total displacement is t over 2, lots of u plus v. Where does that come from? Well, I'm just going to extend this graph a little bit, um, and let's say, actually, this, this one I've put on the slide isn't terribly useful, now I think of it. Um, so let's say that's zero, and let's say it's done this instead. Um, so as you know from IGCSE, 
um, to find the distance travelled, it's the area under the graph. So I'm going to split this into two different areas. I'm going to have one area here and one area here. So for this bottom area, that is an area of u times t. So this is the initial velocity, this is the final velocity. So this has a height of u and it took a time t to occur. This area is a triangle, so it's a half lots of t, and the height is v minus u. It's the final velocity, take away the initial velocity. So it's a half lots of time multiplied by v minus u. And I'm going to multiply out the bracket to start with. So that's a half t v minus a half t u. So to get the total area, the total displacement, I can say S is equal to the area of the triangle, so that's that, plus the area of the square. So if I look at that, I've now got minus a half TU plus a whole, sorry, uh, a whole UT, so I can just write it the same way around, so that simplifies to a half T V plus a half T U. I've got common factors here of a half and a T. So S is equal to a half T lots of V plus U. Um, and I could just rewrite that rather than doing a half times T. I could just say it's T divided by two lots of V plus U. Or as they have in here, uh, addition doesn't matter which around you put it, so I can say that's the same as t over 2 lots of u plus v. With these two equations together, what I can then do is substitute one into the other. So if I call this equation 1 and this equation 2, um, what we often want to do is just eliminate something from here. Um, so if we look at this equation, this has no u in the equation. So I want to say, is it possible to use equation 2 to get rid of, equa of u from equation 1? So if I just rewrite it, I can say u is equal to v minus a t. So now I've got a term for u. So if I go back to equation 1, I can say that is equal to 2 over 2 multiplied by, uh, I can add in here, v minus a t plus v. Um, so that becomes uh, v plus v, so that's t over 2 lots of uh, 2v minus a t. And now let's multiply out these brackets. So that gives me uh, 2vt over 2 minus, uh, I'm going to write it out in full just to show it really clearly, at multiplied by t over 2. So that uh, here I can say the t's, the 2's cancel. So that's vt minus a times t. So that's at squared over 2, or the way I've written it here, s is equal to vt minus a half a t squared. If these ways that I'm kind of moving around fractions and things and showing it first as a t squared over 2 and then a half a t, you do need to be confident with that. Now I know you've all done IGCSE maths, so it should be okay, but if this is something that you're struggling with, have a chat with me in class and I can give you some support work to help on that. We can do the same thing again here. So this is a pretty classic equation. Um, this one has, instead of getting rid of uh, u, I've got rid of v from this equation. So I've already got a term for v. So it's just exactly the same procedure again. I'm just going to rewrite this, and uh, I'm trying to get rid of v this time. So that would be u plus, instead of v, I can just write u plus at. And the same thing happens again. So this becomes t over 2 lots of 2u plus a t. Multiply out the brackets. S is equal to t or 2u t over 2 plus, I'm just going to collapse those two together. Yeah, t times a t is a t squared. And then divided by 2 as well. 2 divided by 2 cancels. So s is equal to u t 
plus a half a t squared. Final equation that you might want, again, um, from this one, I'm now trying to get rid of x. No, not what I'm trying to get rid of, I'm trying to get rid of time. So I want to get rid of time. A little bit trickier um, from this one, um, but let's again just do it the same way I have already. So if I rearrange this, I can say uh, a t is equal to v minus u, um, and then t is equal to v over a minus u over a. Substitute it into here. So v minus a minus u over a all divided by 2. Lots of u plus v is all equal to s. Now this is getting a little bit tricky. So potentially this isn't the smartest way to go around this. Maybe I should have rearranged this equation instead. Um, but let's plug on anyway and see what I can do. Um, so just thinking about the rules of fractions, um, this should be v over 2a minus u over 2a multiplied by u plus v. This is going to get a bit nasty. I think I'm going to end up with a, uh, a polynomial, but let's, um, let's see what happens. So multiplying out these brackets, Brackets. Uh, I've got to be careful here. That's a bracket and that's a bracket. So I'm going to stop there. This is an example of how you can use physics. So I know if I multiply out these two brackets, I'm going to end up with um, at least four terms. And that could get a bit tricky. So what I'm just going to try um, is simplifying this a little bit and trying to go the other way. So before, I got a term for t from this equation and substitute into this one. I'm just going to try rearranging this equation instead and see what I get with that. Um, so I want to get t by itself, so I can say 2s is equal to t lots of u plus v, so that means that t is equal to 2s over u plus v. Is this going to be any better? Let's see. I've got an expression for t, so if I go back, if I substitute now that expression for t into here, I can say v is equal to u plus a multiplied by 2s over u plus v. Um, so v is equal to u plus 2as over u plus v. It's not really helping me um, doing it this way either. Again, all these equations are completely valid. Um, in fact, so what you should be able to do now is prove that this equation is this equation. Um, do I want to do that this way? Let's, let's see what else I could do then. Um, We could try this, I could say v lots of u plus v, if I multiply both sides by u plus v, that will be equal to u lots of u plus v plus 2as. Is that any help? Oh, potentially, okay, I think we might be, okay, I think this is going to get it to us. Okay, so now I can multiply out the brackets, so that will be uv plus uh, v squared is equal to, yeah, here we go, u squared plus uv plus 2as. Here we go. So I subtract uv from both sides. That kills that off. So that gives me, here we go, yeah, v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. Square root both sides. Ooh, and I get to there. Now, the important thing to recognize is that all of these equations were always correct at every stage. So I, you don't have to memorize it like this. You could just substitute there. And if you think, you know what, I know what v and u are. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to find v, I suppose. So if I, if I know what u and um, a are, I could just substitute into those stages. Now, of course, that isn't going to help me here because I want u by itself. Um, but 
what I, the, the kind of the key thing I want you to get is that these SUVAT equations, they do just come from algebra. Sometimes the algebra is hard, but it's just algebra that you should be able to, to do. Might might be on the, the, the limits for some of you, um, but it's, it's not magic. They just come from maths. Um, and you can always do that. So if you're struggling to work out how um, to, well, what equation to use, just go, always go back to the graphs. Sketch a graph and then just remember those key facts that we've done from IGCSE. Remember things like acceleration is always the grade in the graph. Distance traveled or displacement is always the area under a velocity time graph. If you remember those facts, you can normally work out most things. Have a go through that, see if you can derive uh, any of these other equations. So we've got all of these ones here. Um, maybe just do some practice of substituting one equation into the other to see if you can derive where these come from. If you go and memorize the ones in yellow, um, you'll be able to derive all the others, or you should be anyway. So have a go at that maybe as a little bit of uh, practice after this lesson.